So first of all, real quick, what we're talking about is really um, radical, radical functions. And the whole idea of the word radical means either we're going to do f of x of some root, whether it's a square root graph or f of x equals some cubic root, okay? And we took a look at both of these in our reading. We saw that the square root looks like this, and the numbers we like are 1, 4, and 9, because there is a square root of 1, there is a square root of 4, right, and there's a square root of 9, right? That's why this, but there are no square roots of negatives. That's why it looks that way. But a cubic, we found that a cubic can go both directions, because you can, you can take the cube root of a negative number. That's why it exists over here. Same thing with a fourth root. A fourth root looks like a square root, except for a little bit steeper. Same thing with a fifth root. It looks a little bit steeper, the same as a cube root, okay? Now, if we take a look at today's notes, we're going to flip the page, flip the page. So first of all, real quick, what kind of graph is this? Parabola. It's a parabola, right? So we know 0, 0, right? We know 1, 1, remember that? We know 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. We know 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? And then... It's on the same side, other side, because it's symmetrical, right? And that's what it looks like. Now, the vertex is at zero, zero. Okay, so far, so good. Yes, Will? I didn't know that's a parabola. Because of the x squared, okay. right? Does that make sense? If it's x squared, it's always a parabola. If it's an x squared, it's always a parabola. Always, 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 okay? Now, you ready? If I wanted to graph the opposite of this, which would be the square root graph, right? It's kind of like this one on its side. But there's a problem with this graph right here. Remember anything about a function? Is this a function? No, right? Because you've got an x value that appears up with two different y's, right? So when we do the graph of its opposite or its inverse, yeah, we're looking at that one right there, right? And so that's part of the reason we don't see this bottom part because it wouldn't be a function. So but if we're going to do this, we just talked about the fact that instead of doing 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, we're going to go just the opposite, right? We're going to go sure 0, 0, sure 1, 1, but we're not going to go 2, 4. We're going to go 4, 2. And the reason I go 4, 2 is because there is a square root of 4, right? Square root of 4 is 2, boom. And then I'm going to go 9, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Square root of 9 is 3, right? And is basically a sideways parabola, but we just don't draw in the bottom half. Yeah, Will? Why do you do that? Why Great question. Okay, so if you plug numbers in here, okay? So put in zero. Square root of zero is what? Zero. Good. Plug in one. Square root of one is what? Good. Square root of two. What's the square root of two? It's about 1.41. One. Eh. Square root of three? It's about 1.73. Eh, pretty ugly. So let's go straight to four. What's the square root of four? Two. two. Let's go to the next good number, 9. What's square root of 9? So if I do a dot to dot, it follows that shape, right? It is the opposite, also, Will, of that graph. See how they work? But I'm not going to put in the bottom half of this because it wouldn't be a function, okay? So how about this one? Flip the page back, boom. Okay, domain and range of this, by the way. Domain is all real numbers, and the range is y is greater than or equal to zero. You guys agree with that? For that graph? All real numbers, greater than or equal to zero, okay? Domain and range in this one, domain is x is greater than or equal to zero, and the range is y is greater than or equal to zero, okay? Reach for your range, starts at a height of zero and goes up. Don't mess with my domain. There it is, okay? Okay, flip the page back again, okay? I just want you today to see how one is the opposite of the other, okay? So let's graph this one. Anybody remember how we graphed this one? If it's inside, if it's inside, we're going to go which way? Left. We're going to go the opposite, right? So instead of going back three, we're going to go forward three. So we're actually going to go to the right. Sorry, Will. We're going to go to the right three. So the vertex is at three, two. Right? Remember, it's the opposite of the inside. 
So one, two, three, one, two. And if you don't believe me, put it on your calculator and graph it. Take a look at it, right? Because we're going to do that too, okay? We're going to look at it on the calculator, okay? So remember we do our one, one, our two, one, two, three, four, and our three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? And the same thing here, boom to boom to, boom to boom to, boom to boom. Okay, so we get a parabola, right? Remember that? How am I doing, okay? I mean, we've talked about this before. Okay, so then right at the bat, what's my um, domain? What's the domain of this thing? What's the domain of this one? How wide is this graph? How wide is this graph? Don't mess with my domain. How wide is that graph? It's infinity, right? This graph, even though it's going up, it's always moving over, right? Even though it's going up, it's always moving over. So my domain is all real numbers. And what about my range? Starts at a height of 2, doesn't it? And then goes up. So how about y is greater than or equal to 2, okay? So far, so good? All right. Flip the page. Got to keep you awake. Flip the page. What do we got? So let's graph this one. So it's going to be a square root graph, but it doesn't really have a vertex, but let's call it an end point, okay? You're right with that? An end point. So where's the end point of this graph? Three, two, right? Will, question. Um, so, okay, so let's go to three, two. And we're going to take this graph, we're going to take this, what we call our parent function. And let's put it right there, okay? So we'll do the same thing. We're going to go, you ready? One, one, four, four, right? Because square root of four is two, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and three, and there it is, okay? It does not exist back here or under here. It does not. It doesn't, doesn't exist back here at all, right? It can't because we'd have negative square roots, okay? So what's the domain of this one? X is greater than or equal to three. Yes, good job, Will. What's the range of this one? Y is greater than or equal to 2. Y is greater than or equal to 2. Yes. Okay, pretty easy so far. Not bad. Okay, flip the page. There we go. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I'm trying. Okay, so what do you know about this? First of all, what's the vertex in this one? Vertex? Negative 1, 4. But you meant that, didn't you? Because we're going to do the opposite of the inside. So let's go to negative 1, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. What else do we know about this graph? Do I know anything else about this graph? Aaron, put the phone away. Okay, what do you know? Come on, you guys. Mia. Oh, it's going Yeah, it's going to open down. It's upside down, right? You guys agree? So it's going to look like this. 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And it's symmetrical, so I've got points over here, here, and here. Okay. Okay, that look, does that look good? Okay, domain. Okay, how wide is it? How wide is this graph? All real numbers, right? It's forever wide. Okay, all real numbers. Will is correct. What about the range of this graph? There you go. Y is less than or equal to 4. Nice job, Will. Totally right. Okay. So far, so good. Thumbs up. Makes sense. Turn the page. Okay. Now we got a cube root, okay? So first of all, let's graph our cube root here. Now listen how I'm going to go do cube root. I'm going to graph these numbers. When I do a cube root, I'm going to graph these numbers. I'm going to go 1, and I'm going to graph an 8, and I'm going to graph a 27. I'm going to go a negative 1 and a negative 8 and a negative 27, but I can't fit, negative 27 is never, never going to fit, okay? Why am I going to go 8? Why am I going to go, what's the cube root of 8? Two. 2, right? What's the cube root of 27? Three. That's not going to fit, but you got the idea, right? So it's going to look like this. Cube root looks like this. 0, 1, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 2. It goes backwards because you can do negative squared. So I go negative 1, negative 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and negative 2. This is a cube root graph. That's cube root. That's the parent function. Here's my parent function. That's what it looks like, okay? 
and I'm going to show you these on the calculator real quickly, okay? I'm going to finish up by putting things on the calculator, okay? How am I doing so far? Thumbs up? So I want to take this shape and put it over here, okay? So it kind of has, we don't really call it a vertex, but let's call it more like a pivot point, the middle. That's be your pivot point, does that make sense? You okay with calling that a pivot point? It's really actually called an inflection point, so let's call it exactly what it is. That's called my inflection point. The point where it changes from curving upward to curving downward is called an inflection. So when you go to calculus, which you will, Will someday they're going to talk about an inflection point and you go, oh, we learned that in algebra too. And your calculus teacher is going to go, wow, it's not really that hard, right? They're going to do a lot more with this point in calculus. But we're just talking about it. Okay, an inflection point is where it goes from caving, concave up to concave down, okay? So what would our inflection point be here? Negative 1, negative 3. Negative 1, negative 3, right? And can we take our parent function and put it here? No, it's going to have to bend. It's going to have that at the inflection point. It has that weird bend, right? So we'll still do our 1, 1, our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 2, and the same thing back here. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 2, and it looks like this. Okay. Domain and range? Domain and range? What are they? Don't mess with my domain. How wide is that thing? R. All real numbers. Domain is all real numbers. What about range? Believe it or not, it's always going up. R. It's going to be, it's always going up, just slowly, but it's always going up, okay? Same thing. All real numbers, okay? All right, what about this one? So first of all, where's my inflection point? Negative 3, 2. Okay, I agree with that. Negative 3. Two. Okay, so let's go to negative 3, 2. There it is, okay. Now, what's the negative on the inside going to make it do? Ready? Flip it. This way. Negative on the inside? Any visual works, okay? It's going to go like this. I should almost make you stand up and do it. Then you might remember, okay? Negative on the inside is going to flip it over it, the y-axis, but in this case, right over its pivot point, which its pivot point is the inflection point. So instead of going like this, it's going to go the other way. One, one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two. One, one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's back, back, okay. Now, can we graph these on the calculator, right? Because you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, Mr. Davis, if I could just my world, right? My world is pushing buttons. You guys agree with that? Yes, I do. This is your, this is your world, electronics, right? And it's amazing how good kids are on calculators because that's your world. So check it out. What if we could do this on the calculator? Well, we just did. So if I want to do the last one, I'd say, okay, y equals clear. And I could say, okay, well, I want to do this one right here. I go, a, so I go to math, cube root. See my cube root? Cube root. Now I got to go negative, another parentheses, x plus x plus 3, parentheses, another parentheses, plus 2. Let's see what it looks like. Wow, kind of like what I had, huh? Crazy. Okay. So, here's what I want you guys to do. And you can use your calculator. That's fine. I don't mind if you graph it with calculator, okay? I believe it's faster without it, but, you know, it's up to you. Um, and we have about 20 minutes to get stuff done. And if you want to borrow.